second here. I forgot about something. She was not right because there was another secret to success. There was not just one. I was right because I also highly recommend you get on Shark Tank if you can possibly get on there. <laughs> and after 15 years, become an overnight success. Yeah. Like Coldplay or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so we want to know, how were you selected to be on the show? I hired a marketing company last year for the first time ever. Um, as a matter of fact, the reason I hired the marketing company was I called the guy and the, the man and woman who did pillow pets. I kept having people come in my store at Mall of America and say, oh, this kind of reminds me of pillow pets, which, by the way, it doesn't at all. But... <laughs> After I researched the company and found out that they did 100, 100 million in sales, I thought, hey, maybe it does remind me of Pillow Pets. <laughs> and so I tracked, I tracked him down, and uh, I tracked this guy down. He finally returned my call. We talked for a while. He was busy. He said, do you have a marketing company? I said, no. He said, well, there's one thing. I said, I've spent so much money on marketing. I've wasted so much money. He said, I know, but if you can find a good one, it's worth it. So I did some research. Not much, I might add, because I do everything by gut, which... Seems to work, I guess. Um, but I found a company in, Mar in, in, in Tampa called Marketing in Color. And um, among uh, lots of other things they did great for us, one day they sent me an email and it uh -huh. said, hey, we think you'd be great for this show. There's a casting call in Orlando. Cool. And so I went to Orlando. And in typical beanbag fashion, I got there at 11 AM, which I thought was very early. The people that camped out there didn't think that was early at all. <laughs> and. Uh, so I show up with my, I noticed I had a stain on my corduroy shirt, so I had a story lined up about it being my, my lucky shirt. I had no pitch planned. I didn't even know I was supposed to have a pitch. I just figured I've been selling this thing for 15 years. I can pitch yeah. it. And uh, I go in, and the, man, there are people everywhere. It was like American Idol. I'm like, oh my gosh. I don't know where the end of the line was, but I know that was my spot. And so I walk in with my big lime green bean bag. And I set it down, and I instantly go, I am not this desperate. <laughs> it turns out I was that desperate, but anyway. Um, so I went to lunch with a friend. I left the beanbag sitting in the middle of the floor, and I decided at lunch that I was leaving. I was like, they're going to be cutting into my drinking time pretty soon, and this is not going to happen. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so I left the beanbag there, I came back from lunch, I picked it up, I'm about to leave, and this lady comes over, just a lady doing the same thing I am, and she says, oh, I love the beanbag, it's so great. And when people show interest in it, I like to do what we call the demonstration, which is pull the bed out, flip it, because we know it gets attention. So I do the demonstration yeah. for her, and I bloop, bloop, flip it over, <laughs> and everybody's gathering around, they're going, oh, where can I get one? And I'm passing out business cards, and, and all of a sudden I hear this voice go, how many sales do you have? How long have you been in business? You have a patent? And these are not normal customer no, no, no. questions. And I'm <laughs> bending over like this, trying to get the thing back in the cover, and I look up, and there's this little Midwestern girl, and I, and I look up at her, and I go, now who are you again? And she said, I'm the person you're trying to get back there to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and the next word, I swear to you, this is exactly what I said. She said that, and I said, I'm gonna tell you that, the, I'm gonna say, uh, dollar amounts because it's on TV, so you guys know probably already. But I look up and I said, 15 years of business, utility patent on the idea, 1.4 million in sales last year. Can I go home now? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, hold on a second. And next thing I know, she took me back to the, took me to the front of the line, gave me the golden ticket. And the funny thing about that, what I found really interesting was that I went from being, I don't need this. My business is great. I don't need this stuff. I'm going home. <laughs> When I got that golden ticket, I swear to you, I went down my phone list. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anybody else to call, so I just went down the list <laughs> and kept just, yeah, you're not going to believe it, man. You ain't going to believe this. Yeah, I'll be on Shark Tank. You believe it? <laughs> so that's how I got on the show. That was a long answer so, to that question. I know. No, that was, that was good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had to put my paper down. I was like, this is a... Um, so is it true that you have to give up 5% of your equity regardless of whether you make a deal I or not, it's to actually on the show. 2% of equity or 5% of sales or something like that. It's when I sign this contract, the, a reality yeah. show contract, you guys, I don't know if you can download one of these or not, but they're, they're fun to read because they use, they use words that aren't even lawyer talk. They're just very blunt. Like if we find some stuff on you, we're going to use it. Like, you're like <laughs> you, you, 
you can't do anything to us. If you got any skeletons and you're worried about it, if we find them, we're using them. So basically, you do sort of sign your life away. When my attorney and I sat down at Starbucks and went through, through it page by page, he yellowed it up and all that. And when he got done, I said, what do you think? He goes, do you want to be on the show? <laughs> I said, I think, yeah. And he says, sign the contract. <laughs> so I've, I've, I have yet to hear about them enforcing that, mm -hmm. but they, they certainly could. But at the same time, for what it does, I wouldn't care. I, I'd be partners with, I don't even know who, I don't even know who it would be. Is it ABC or Mark Burnett? I can't even remember. I don't even care. But either one of them would make great partners. <laughs> so... So, what, which shark did you fear the most? Did you get to meet the sharks before? You do the not end? meet the sharks ahead so of time. Just... You do not see the room ahead of time. Whoa. You do not know anything. They come, they bring you to a hotel. I um, have to be careful with what I say because I'm not really supposed to talk about much when it comes to this. But let me just tell you that, that it's very real. Um, you do not see them. They do not know you. Anything, when you walk out there, it's, it's crazy. Then you walk out and you stand there for a little while and they. They're getting the cameras all set up and everything, and that's where they're also capturing emotion where they can edit it into different spots. You know, so if you walk out there and give them like, I was, I was going, <gasps> you know, <laughs> give, them, give them some stuff to work with, you know, in the, in the editing room. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, 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 ter it's absolutely terrifying, and I'll tell you, it's uh -huh. terrifying leading up to it as well because you're working with the low-level producers and, and getting your pitch right and everything, and I mean, I was stressed. I was so, here's what, I thought about what I was going to tell you about here, right, this, on, on this deal. I was so stressed that I thought I had cancer of the everything. <laughs> Not kidding you. I, I was giving up, I was giving up things left and right. No alcohol, no coffee. You know, it was like, what can I do to make this stop? And it was, wasn't until about two days after we filmed that I looked at Sarah and I was laying in bed and finally, for once in the morning, I woke up and it wasn't on my mind, and I just laid there so relaxed, and I was like, oh my God, it was stress. So, yeah. It was stress. I, I, stress can, I learned a lot about stress. Stress can so, be, you cannot know stress is killing you. It's like high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so you made a deal with Lori. Yes. And what did it feel like to give a big chunk away that you've worked so hard you know, on this company for 15 years, and to have to make a decision on the spot? I mean, I just can't even imagine. Well... First of all, let me tell you that, uh, I'm going to answer that question, but I have to okay. tell you this funny part, because okay. just like I was going to quit and not do the, the do you remember, there, what, Seinfeld, remember the when George did everything the opposite of what he, what he <laughs> thought he should do? I sort of did that. I'm like the Phil Phillips, if you watch American Idol, I'm like the Phil Phillips of, of uh, Shark Tank, because I tried to quit the audition, and then... <laughs> One day they didn't call me back, the producers. When I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much going to be on the show. And they said they were going to call me at a certain time. They didn't call at a certain time. I hate that. And so they called me, and I actually walked on the back porch. I felt like I was floating at the time because I knew what I was about to do. I'd already talked with Sarah about it. And they called, and I said, I quit. I'm out. And then they have never had anybody say that to them before. They were like, what? what, what you mean like the show? <laughs> and... Uh, they, thank goodness they talked me into to staying on. And then the next, the, the next thing I did was after I made that deal with Lori, mm -hmm. I came back to my office. I threw the card on my desk. And mind you, I had people trying to get that number from me big time. All the people I met, they're like, can I get her number? Can I get her number? email address? I threw the card on my desk. And I never called her. Wow. And I don't know how many weeks went by, but I never dialed the number. And all of a sudden... <laughs> My phone rings one day, and it, I looked like one of the producer's numbers, so I wasn't worried about it. I picked the, hello, she goes, and it, this was class. I swear, anybody that's got an ex-girlfriend, this is the classic. She goes, Byron? <laughs> and I said, yes. And she said, hey, it's Lori Grenier. And I go, hey, Lori, how's it going? <laughs> and she says, well, you must not be too thrilled about things since you haven't called me. And I said, well, yeah, I've been kind of busy, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, we... we we, she's very normal, and so after talking about it and everything, she was, she was very cool, and uh, we ended up flying out to Chicago. As far as giving up a huge percentage of my business, um, the deals on Shark Tank are very real, and what that means is when you make that deal, much like when you make an offer on a house, you still have time to do inspections and things like that. Oftentimes, you don't close the deal at all. And a lot of times, most times, you don't close for what you originally offered. So 
I can't tell you what we, what we finally arrived at, but I can tell you that I'm thrilled with it. And she's great. Awesome. So what, how, what has happened to your business since the show? Uh, since the show, when the show airs, the site goes crazy. It crashed. Um, when it was back up and running, the orders came flooding in, um, in a nutshell, just from being on the show, not counting the, the deal or anything else, uh, just from being on the show, site, our sales will more than double. Just from that little eight minute, it just replayed wow. the other night too, but just from that little eight minute or whatever thing that plays, our sales will more than double just from that. QVC just placed a very large order for the fourth quarter and Bed Bath & Beyond is reviewing the products right now. Wow, so, awesome. So that not is a awesome. bad deal. Thank you, you're awesome.